Ah, is it working? Yeah, we're on. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while. Fuck's sake. Can people please stop eating when they're making videos? Oh, the cheese, uh, not got a new channel, but he's going down a new route, didn't he? He's gone independent. I thought, all right, I haven't really been able to handle him over the years, over the years, over the months. When he's been on lives because he just takes over conversations and just goes on and on. I thought, no, you know, he's obviously got something to say. So I thought, I'll watch one of his videos, one of his lives the other day. So a lot of the other ones are just doing my fucking nothing. I put it on and he's there talking away and just boom, boom, boom. I'm like, after a minute, I'm like, fuck this. You know, I may be a fucking idiot, but I'm not wasting my valuable time left on earth. Watching people eat and fucking mumble in a way they can't understand them because they're fucking eating. I think it was him before. He starts his life and he's got his dinner there. It's like, eat your fucking dinner and then do a live, yeah? I can't watch fighting trolls anymore. He just keeps making these fucking noises. And I'm like sitting there, I was sitting there last night thinking, what, you know, no, nothing against these lads, you know, fucking filthy boots, do what you need to do, but I'm watching it thinking, oh, Richard, what are you doing? You're a grown man, Richard, when you watch another grown man eat their fucking dinner, and just make a series of uh, fucking noises. Fighting trolls never used to do that, right? So he's either developed some sort of nervous fucking Tourette's type syndrome. Or he's seen somebody else do it. I mean, he's quite impressionable, isn't he? So he thinks, oh, yeah, I want to be like that. So now, like, every sort of 30 seconds, it's... Um, 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 ooh, 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 ooh. I'm like, oh, Rich, no, no more. It's why I haven't made a video for a while, to be honest with you. I've just got disillusioned with the whole game. You know, I used to try and keep abreast of it so I could make videos on what's recently been happening. And so much happened in a short space of time that I was just like, every time I went to make a video, something else had happened to change the whole story. And then a sort of week has passed. I, I was thinking, right, if you don't make a video soon, you're just going to lose interest in this, like you always do. You know, I always get bored of things. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> I nearly had a grape, man. <laughs> I nearly actually had a grape because I wanted one. Um, put them up there so I don't uh, expose myself as the hypocrite that I, I know I am. Um... Yeah, what's been happening, right? Dr. Rackpole, he was making a series of lives, one of like four hour jobs and getting fucking hammered. And, I'm, and I like Dr. Rackpole, let me just clear that up first. And I was watching, um, I was watching his lives thinking, is he more pissed than usual here? You know, I'd occasionally seen him hammered on the live, but not very often. And it seemed like he was just going on fucking all day as well, he? And uh, then he comes up and makes a video then saying he's a bit fucking ill. Um, so I think maybe, you know, maybe he's like a sort of an alcoholic who was keeping it at bay. And, uh, and it was all getting a bit much again. So he's sort of taking a backward step because he was rocking with everybody, wasn't he? And, he had some big rocks going on. Who was he fighting with? Fuck. It's hard to remember what's been happening. He had a big f fucking off with fighting monks, didn't he? And a few others. 
Is it our string as well? I don't know. Right, let me let me just sort of bring this back to some semblance of order. Here. Um, I'm abstinent, right, uh, currently from uh, all drugs apart from like nicotine, if I'm honest. But all drugs, uh, including the liquid drug alcohol. Um, the reason being, and I'm not anti drugs, and you know, I'm just anti me doing drugs. The uh, reason being, because I'm not very good at doing them, and the, um, what used to be uh, recreational and fun ceased being that way at some point, and then it just became habitual, and then it just became a, a fucking problem. And then it became such a problem that it was creating more problems than it was solving. Because uh, solving problems was the original uh, inspiration to use these things. And uh, yeah, and I got to the point where I thought, right, well, if I'm going to continue uh, being a human being on this planet in a way that I find acceptable mentally, I have to stop doing these things. Um, part of me wishes I wasn't that type of person, but part of me accepts that's the way it is. As I say, I'm not anti-drugs, you know, sometimes when I see there's a lot of weed smokers in there on YouTube and I sometimes think, oh, that'd be nice. That'd be nice to have a nice fucking spliff now. And it probably would be, you know. But then I'd be smoking 24-7 and then I wouldn't be able to afford to smoke 24-7. And then I'd be running out and then I'd be depressed and then I'd want to kill myself. Um, so that initial... Uh, Bob Marley-esque uh, illusion I create for myself of what weed would be is quickly replaced by feelings of uh, anxiety and depression. And then I'm like, oh, well, maybe I won't go down that road then. But yeah, if you can enjoy it, fucking good luck to you, man. Fuck, you know. And uh, yeah. And it was a bit of an argument, I think I touched on this before, between like the weed smokers and the drinkers, and you are probably better off smoking weed than drinking if you're going to be doing these things uh, 24-7. Unless you've got some sort of underlying mental health issues, and then smoking weed 24-7 is going to make you go insane, but it's going to happen behind your back. Um, at least when you're a raging alcoholic, even though you're in denial, so you pretend you don't know about it, you do. Problem with being a weedaholic, if you're not mentally capable of being a weedaholic, it all goes on behind your back, so you're going mental, and you're the only one who doesn't fucking know about it. So yes, yeah, so there was a... Oh yeah, and then Johnny Woodsman. Now Johnny gets a load of grief. Uh, I wouldn't say I've defended him, but like Cam Corner put a video up, and he was sort of having a bit of a pop at Woodsman. And I put a comment underneath, you know, saying there's a lot more important things. You know, I see Karma Corner as uh, not the Karma Police arrest this man. But I see him as, um, like, he does sterling work, I think, when it comes to, like, you know, dickle hickle. You know, when it comes to trying to get that situation fucking cleared up. So I think I prefer Karma's work when he's punching up, not punching down, if you like, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, and I put a comment saying, you know, there's more important things, and then I said someone else to him, and he had a right old fucking pop on me, which we managed to clear up, you know. Um, but it was like, ooh, bloody hell, Karma's, Karma's giving me a row. Uh, but I like him, so I pointed that out, and then we were all all right then. He said, I'm only winding you up, man. But yeah, so there's so many different stratas in there to this game. You know, you've got your serious stuff like that, like, you know, this dickle hickle thing that's back again, yeah. He had his month of positive videos, uh, which weren't getting enough views, so he's back now. And, um, you know, as I said all throughout this, you know, innocent till proven guilty and all that, but also, 
as I see it, right, is, is you know, I may be wrong, right, it's hard to keep up, but is the situation when it comes to Diggle Higgle, now he's saying, oh, I've shown you this, I've shown you the things I've been necked for, and now his latest fucking art crew now is, oh, it shows this, and people are going, no, no, don't want to see that, we want to see all the things that you've been uh, arrested for or questioned about, regardless of where they've ended up in court. Now, you could argue that, well, if you've never been nicked for it, you know, innocent or proven guilty and all that, and there is an argument for that. But then people are saying, from what, from what I gather, as I say, I may be wrong, if he was to show the uh, the type of acro that's now being requested, it would show all the things he's been questioned for. <clears throat> and that may then um, show that he's been questioned by the police three or four times <clears throat> about... Um, you're not allowed to say the word, you get your channel pulled. So as karma would call it, uh, three or four great apes and potential uh, things involving uh, girls, children. And he's like, why not showing you that? But what percentage of uh, men in this country have been questioned by the police for three to four great babes and uh, and a few different offences involving children you know to get convictions on these uh, types of offences is notoriously difficult um, so just because you haven't been convicted of something it doesn't mean you haven't done it you know I've uh I've never been um, arrested and convicted for possession of heroin, right? In my life, I've probably had heroin in my possession uh, several thousand times. Now, because I've never been arrested and convicted for possession of heroin, that doesn't mean I've never had heroin in my possession. It just means that the police have never caught me with it. Um, so yeah, so I don't know, is that the situation now? Is Dirkle Herkle not prepared to show what people already know, really? Because I know about it, because I've watched stuff, so. But he's been arrested several times for several fucking twisted offences, and the police or the CPS have never been able to say, yeah, we've got a realistic uh, chance of a conviction if this goes to court, you know. The CPS, the Crown Prosecution Service, they won't take a case to court if they don't think there's a realistic chance that the person is going to be found guilty of it because it's a waste of fucking time, in it? And they can only prosecute somebody for the same offence once, I think. Maybe that's in America, that double jeopardy thing. Uh, yeah, it may not apply in this country. I'm just trying to think of other things... Uh... Cases. Can you be? Can you go to court for the same thing twice? I'm not sure. But um, yeah. So I don't know. It's, as I said, there's different spheres in it. You got all this serious stuff, which you know I love. People like Karma who are willing to put themselves out there and fucking and do the act, put the time in to find out what's what. You know the legalities and and then you know have the bollocks to come on you and fucking directly challenge these people. You know, regardless of whether you show your face or not, people don't have to show their fucking face on you, do they? And there's very good reasons not to. So yeah, so when I seen him popping on at Woodsman, I thought, I don't know. But my point with Woodsman, yeah, just to bring it back to the original thing, I don't do drink or drugs at all for the reasons I outlined earlier. And then you got Brackpool, Ashtring, and Johnny Woodsman, yeah, who I'd consider the three of them 
the more I can work out from what I've seen. You know, they're either sort of alcoholics. No, hang on, they are. Yeah, let's not fucking beat about the bush. They're all alcoholics, whether they're aware of it or not. Rack Puller's had a big old fucking binge. It's all gone wrong. His body's fucking saying, fuck this fucking doctor. Pack it in. And he's sort of listened to his body and taken a backward step from all this nonsense. Ash drink. Uh, he had all his fucking mad spell, didn't he, around Christmas? When he was threatening to go around people's houses and all that business. And then everybody was like, oh, we're not going to be your friend or watch you on YouTube anymore unless you sort your head out. And then he went away and sorted his head out a bit. Then he didn't drink for a week. And then he wasn't doing sniff and all that. And now it's creeping back in, and it? It's creeping back in. His lives are getting a bit madder. He's getting a bit madder. It's a bit of an ongoing thing with uh, him and uh, the other Ash from 3D. I saw on a live the other day where... Um, Juice Bomb, Mr. C, he came on, because him and Ash are supposed to be having a fight for charity. <clears throat> Bit of a disagreement. And he said to Ash String, oh, well, a bit childish, yes, but he was like, oh, what about that thing you told me about the other Ash, 3D Ash? And Ash String is like, what? As if to say, oh, don't talk about that. And then 3D Ash, not long after, shut his life down. You see him thinking, what the fuck have you been saying about me? Because not so long ago, fucking Ash String was threatening 3D Ash. He wanted to fight them and blah, blah, blah. And 3D Ash was like laughing as if to say, oh, mate, you don't want this smoke. But, you know, he felt so uh, unthreatened by Ash String that he didn't even take it seriously. And then they've sort of become mates, you know. So 3D Ash has sort of looked out for fucking... 10 pint dash <clears throat> and now he's thinking what have you been fucking talk talking about me behind my back because uh juice bomb was sort of telling tales on him <clears throat> which is all a bit weird um so yeah to try and bring it back to clarity this is why i don't drink at all uh same with uh woodsman he had his fucking binges, he was getting his ass out, getting involved in rucks here, there and everywhere. And now he's on now talking about, oh, he likes to have a couple of quiet drinks in the night. And, uh, fact of the matter is, if you're anything like me, yeah, we can all fucking take our time for a bit. Ultimately, it will end in chaos, as it's already happening with Mr. Dring, as it's just happened with Rackpole, and, uh, and as it will happen with Woodsman again, you know, his couple of quiet little drinks uh, will end uh, very shortly, probably, with him having a right old binge, getting off his twat and uh, being back on making chaotic fucking content. Uh, he's now making videos now. He's uh, hanging about with his missus on YouTube and making... Uh, I don't know, gentle little videos about his surrounding areas, etc. And he, he's like, you he wanted to make it, you know, you want, he wants to grow his channel. And a bit of advice for Mr. Woodsman, you know, we've had a few words in comments. Uh, my advice to you, Mr. Woodsman, yeah, is make some videos, right? The videos don't have to be about you, yeah? He's like, oh, what if I just, my life's pretty boring in Thailand, I don't do much. And, and unless I'm involved in like YouTube drama, you know, even though he don't want to be part of it, he keeps talking about it. <clears throat> you know, there, there is a world outside of you, Johnny. Um, and this small area of YouTube, us fucking idiots talk about. And you're obviously, you know, an intelligent man on some level. Uh, so, yeah, so make videos, you know, about, you know, about incredible moments from history. Or, uh, well, yeah, you know, make some videos about topics outside of yourself. 
you know. I think you were talking about the uh, attempting to read Dostoevsky, um, even though you couldn't quite pronounce his name right. Um, maybe I am. Sorry, that was me being a bit pretentious to it. Uh, and I know what you mean there. You know, I've always had this thing about, you know, when people are talking about literary classics and and I feel like, oh God, I'm so poorly educated. You know, there's people talking about these. It's like Shakespeare, and I try, I, I can't read fucking Shakespeare. Start reading it, I'm like, oh man, just fucking talk normally. I can't understand what you're on about. You know, and I don't particularly want to watch like sort of some sort of ghetto youth interpretations of, of Shakespeare, you know. It's like, ah, oh, you know, there's some sayings in there, there's some quotes from Shakespeare just people use every day without even realising it is Shakespeare. So he was obviously a, a highly talented man, writer. Well, I have heard that there was no actual real William Shakespeare. All the stuff was written by a team of people. And that was just his name was put forward as the one. So who knows? But then also they say there's two Paul McCartneys and there was about four Stephen Organs. Do you know what I mean? I reckon Stephen Organs died fucking a long time ago. But because he was a useful asset, uh, they just made a new one, really. It's got a new actor in to play Stephen Hawkins, and every few years they just replaced him. And then after a while, then they said, hang on. <clears throat> We've told everybody that this guy had an illness or a disease or whatever. The life expectancy of about 30 or 40. And now he's about fucking 66, and we're still fucking wheeling him out there to uh, further the scientific agenda that we're trying to put forth and using him as a spokesman for it. And he was supposed to die 40 years ago, so we're gonna have to fucking end him now. So was there several um, Stephen Hawkins? Has there been two Paul McCartney's? Um, was Shakespeare? Just a team of writers. You know. Maybe that would be good, yeah? Johnny Woodsman investigates conspiracy theories. That would be good, John. Try that. Because, uh... Yeah, videos of you stroking your dog. I'm probably getting tiny bit too close to the dog's genital area and you probably knew what you were doing there you know my daughter's got a dog it's uh what's it called a pom chi it's a cross between a pomeranian and a chihuahua it's only got three legs actually it lost its leg you know i was gonna say a car accident it wasn't fucking driving along and i think it got run over um lovely dog and, you know, I love cuddling up this dog and all that. He's, like, consider him a mate. But when I'm stroking him, I don't know why. It's just this inbuilt thing of mine. I consciously, maybe it's just I don't want to touch a dog's ass. Do you know what I mean? For purely for fucking health reasons. But when I stroke him, you know, and I stroke his belly, and I'll stroke to about halfway down. And maybe it's just because I think, well, you know, just normal so when I saw you stroking your dog and for my my like and you were going just that tiny bit too close to the dog's genital area um but you probably knew what you're doing you know because because you knew it'd be funny you knew somebody like me would pick up on that and you know I'm only teasing you John you know I love you well not love you but you know what I mean you know I tolerate you Oh, thanks, Cliff. Uh, you know, I see you. I see you, John. Yeah, I see you. I see you worth. You're worthwhile, human. 
but you may be an out and out fucking wrong on in it that's the problem you know like with decker and all that he's full out and out wrong guns not that he is i don't know could well be but you know part of their arsenal is uh to be able to manipulate people and that you know that's what they do so who knows nobody fucking knows well some people know but it's hard to know and that so yeah when it comes to wrong uns and uh kids and dogs i i tend to err on the side of caution call me old-fashioned so yeah all that was going on there was a big rap one there with uh monk and exposure i was watching that monk was yeah that's how it happened astring was doing uh was fucking waxing his chest when he and uh and then rack pulls missus come on and said i'll tell you what you should do for your next uh challenge top yourself and i you know and then she was getting loads of shit for it and i i don't think she was trying to encourage him to do it i think she was trying to make a point of these people are just fucking mugging you off getting you to act like some sort of performing seal, yeah, you know, and is that where it's going to end? So then she was getting a load of shit. And I think Monk was involved in that, giving a shit. Well, <laughs> nearly at a grape again. And, um, yeah, and then Rockpool and Monk were going at it, weren't they? Oh, I've lost my train of thought now. Oh yeah, so Monk was then on Exposure's FIFA Live the next night. You know, because Rackpool had said, ah, oh, it was only Panther. So then Monk was ranted away on Exposure's Live, like doing a thing of, and it may have been a hint of what I was saying about, you know, weed and mental health. I think he was having a little breakdown himself. And he was throwing out fucking mad stuff and saying, ah, oh, it's only Panther. And then someone else asked any banter, you know, because uh, Rackpool had. And then he dissed, uh, he dissed God. And Exposure didn't like that. Exposure sort of shut him down a bit. And, uh, yeah, and then Exposure and Monk aren't friends. Eh? And Exposure sort of gone off, gone off the scene a bit since. Maybe he saw, fuck this, this is too fucking weird, all this business. I don't know. You know, and Uncle K's sort of taken himself out of the mad side of it. And he, since he's got his new studio and his shed, he's just doing actual interviews with people with an actual story, you know. So I think people are sort of, uh, you know, monks doing his own lives now. I watch that as well. It's all right. It's quite fucking peaceful, you know. Couldn't watch it too much because it'd be a bit boring, do you know what I mean? But. I got on there, that was 10 for 20 minutes in the night, you know. Because uh, some of the, like the rant, that's why I can't handle trolls at the moment. You know, I used to watch his channel all the time, I used to like it. And, and now he's just banging on so much about the trolls, and he, you know, and the jealous and this and that. And giving it, ooh, 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 giving it all that. And, ooh, 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 and, 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 and it's like, mate. You know, I said to him, I didn't say to him, I said on you, and somebody clipped it and sent it to him, and he made a little comment about it on his channel. But I said to him, no, I shouldn't say to him, been, let me explain that bit, Rich. I said, back in like January, I said, you're banging on too early about this uh, 3D fight. There's a long time to go, do you know what I mean? You started banging on about it too early. And anybody who watches my videos will say I referred it to when I was at Brown Comedy Nights, you know, and I'd start promoting them too early. And when it came to the time where I should be doing the promotion in the last few weeks, I'd spent so much time banging on about it in the previous six weeks that I felt like, oh, I'm just pissing people off now. I've gone on and on about it. But that's when I should have been upping my marketing. So I was only pointing out that, you know, I didn't want them to make the same mistakes I'd made. He just doesn't take criticism very well, does he? Constructive or otherwise. You know, a bit like that kind of that. Certain people, they put themselves out there in this game, don't they? 
and you know, not any any sort of ending which doesn't big them up, then they see it as a as a threat, you know, to their soul. Weird, really. Um. Yes, yeah, so like I say, you know, because they were all banging on about the Street Fight Club in January, and so I felt it was too early, and now half of the fights, probably more, you know, half of the fights that were being talked about all the time there and everything aren't even happening now, you know what I mean? Ditchy and living in London, Ben Archer and Bobby Kay, it's not really happening. Um, trolls and his original opponent that change, and then his current opponent. There was talk of that changing, but I think it's back on now. And uh, yeah, so when I said in January, stop talking about your fight. You know, he could have been doing training then, can he? You know, and I've made this mistake myself of not doing what I should be doing because I'm too busy talking about what I should be doing and then when it comes to crunch time it's so much harder for me to do something because I've been talking about it rather than actually preparing to do it you know do you imagine he'd been training properly and he had it all at his disposal then he's got access to some fucking amazing people to help him you know um, Danny Christie, Venice, Ash Jab, you know, lots of people have uh, been there for him to help him. Imagine he'd been training properly since January. You know, he would be a fucking handy maniac now, wouldn't he? Well, I think he's gone a bit, probably gone a bit backwards, pardon the pun. From uh, from where he was at one point in his training schedule, but you know, yeah, like like have you said, I respect people who are willing to get in a fight and stand there and fight with a bloke. Not my game. Fuck that. If you want to go head to head with me, it's gonna to have to be on the fuck off course. And I'm really old now, and I wear glasses, so nobody's allowed to hit me. And I've got a really thin skull. I haven't, but if I say that, it may uh, discourage people from twatting me in the head. Um, so yeah, I respect people who are willing to get up there and fight, do you know what I mean? But just because you're talking about getting up there and fighting, um, that doesn't really warrant any particular respect, you know? It's the actual doing it is the bit that People should respect you for, well, you haven't done that bit yet. Um, so yeah, I don't know, you know, I don't want to be critical of people. You know, and I know he was running that pit and it all went mad and, you know, what it is, right, I think, I think what annoys me in life in general, some people are prepared to admit their weaknesses, yeah or their faults, or their mistakes, you know, like my good self, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life, you know, a lot of, I don't know if regrets is the right, right word, I suppose it is in a way, but I try not to focus too much on X's pointless, but, you know, with addiction and all that, you know, I've let people down, and etc. then you got somebody like, you know, Danny Christie, it was like, oh, look, I've done this and this. Fucking ashamed of it, but I'm trying to move on from it. Same with Paul Vaness. You know, he'll admit the things he's done wrong. But and then you got other people then who will, like, dig their heels in. I haven't done anything wrong. It's like trolls. What have I done to deserve any of this grief? I haven't done anything. It's like, well, mate, you know, it's not all everybody else. Do you know what I mean? You know, he's like, name me one thing I've done. Well, there's lots of things that have come out that you've done, which are which aren't good. You know, but take some responsibility. You know, take a bit of responsibility in it. 
Um, I'm not saying everything's your fault, you know, and a lot of people have been out of order to you in the pit and all that business. It's the same with Dickle Hickle, isn't it? You know, if he'd have come out and said, oh, do you know what, in my fucking 20s, drugs and blah, 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 I, was, I wasn't the fucking nice person. I've done some fucking horrible things I regret. But I'm really trying to move on from that and change. And Brinstead, he's on that. I've never done fuck all wrong. Like these lot, fucking, these are the cunts. Everybody apart from me, I haven't done anything wrong. I'm fucking great that I am. Fuck. You know, people can't tolerate that sort of shit. Especially people who are having to fucking, not having to, but choosing to admit their own faults. Do you know what I mean? Let's all play by the same rules, innit? You know, let he without sin cast the first stone, right? So no one's innocent, yeah, yeah? Nobody's innocent, yeah? Everyone's just at different levels of out of order, you know, ranging from flipping, stealing a pint of milk to putting a fucking knife through somebody's face, you know? And only one person is the best, one person is the worst, and the rest of us are in the middle. But at least admit, you know, admit some fucking blame in life, you know, take some fucking responsibility. You know. All right, I won't say that, but it's, it's unnecessary. Yeah, anyway, as I say, I probably missed out loads of things. Like Gary Taz Carroll was getting a load of grief on him and I sort of petered out a bit. Certain people I, I rarely mention in my videos, him being one of them. Um, Benson Edges, Ben Hatchett, oh, he's he's fucking seen a bit of footage of his latest fight. And just looks like he's beating people up and being very over the top fucking uh, about it, you know. It's strange. Um, but yeah, I don't mention him much. I don't mention Gary Taz Carroll much. I haven't talked a lot about Ditchy, especially when he's eating. And a lot of the reason is I can't understand the word they fucking say. There's a few of these Geordies as well. What's his name? Paul Clayton. Can't understand the word he fucking says. Yeah, so I can't really comment a lot on these people. Because I have no idea what they're saying. Anyway... I'm going to go now because I'm going to eat a grape in the privacy of my own home with nobody being subjected to watching me. Yeah, I've been reluctant to make videos. I watched a bit of my last one back and I thought, that's just fucking bullshit, Rich. I remember when I made it, actually, I thought, you're not in the mood for this. Why are you bothering? And my answer to myself was, well, I haven't really made one for a bit. And then... Um, I said, oh, okay, go on then. I should have. I'm not very good with quality control, you know. Never have been when it comes to YouTube and all that. I used to do, like, I used to record myself talking for, like, 40, 50 minutes and put it on my other channel about five years ago. I wouldn't call it a podcast because I hate that word. Lectures, that's what I called them. It's on my Griff's Lonely Dollars channel. Griff's Lonely Dollar Lectures. Yeah, I wanted to be a lecturer so I could call myself Professor Griff. Which for, for the old school would be quite funny. Um, yeah, and I never used to edit nothing. And sometimes I'd record stuff and I'd put it out and I'd be like, oh God, that was a bit silly. And it's the same with these videos, you know. I don't believe in editing bits out and blah, blah, blah. You know, this is... It's not a major fucking Netflix production, is it? It's when people are making videos and editing themselves to make themselves look better. Grow up, lads. Oh, what probably do? I'm going to put my dead cheek. And then I'm looking for the logo of podcast goes. Eh? James English. That one. Mm. Mm. Dandy, Decker's house.